Hi everyone. This video is a response to a guy I've been having a PM conversation with for quite a while now. I'm not going to tell you who it is because I don't want to hang him out since this is a private conversation. But um, I'll tell you this much. He's a creationist and he's about 14 or so. Okay. I wanted to answer as many of your questions as I can could in this video, but really if I answered all of them, the video would be really long and uh, you would fall asleep and so would I. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna limit myself to your most recent questions, but I'm gonna answer them in a way that ties in some of your previous questions as well. You write, the greatest evolutionist source in America is National Geographic, and listen to what it said. In an article about sharks, it says exactly this. The shark did not always have its dorsal fin, but eventually it decided to grow a dorsal fin to steer itself. How educated is that? I absolutely agree. That's stupid. But you're wrong about National Geographic being the greatest source of information about evolution. It's not even a scientific source, it's popular science. It's directed at laymen and therefore it uses a lot of highly simplified explanations and expressions and this is one of them. I don't know who made the claim that National Geographic is the greatest evolutionist source but I, I have a few suspects in mind. None of them have any academic qualifications in any field related to evolution and in fact one of my prime suspects is so dishonest he's currently in jail for fraud. Second, the whole bilateral symmetry thing. Why do we have one heart but two kidneys? I'm gonna try a new way of explaining this instead of getting technical. I think my original way to try to explain this was a little too technical. Initially, a mutation occurred in an animal that didn't yet have a heart. It didn't need one because it was so small that it, it didn't actually need a specific organ dedicated to pumping blood around its body. But then a mutation occurred that gave it this kind of pump. That turned out to be an advantage, so this mutation was passed down to future generations. To this day, we still only have one heart because no mutation has occurred that has changed that. Instead, however, mutations have occurred that have changed the shape of our heart. In a similar manner, in some organism, a mutation occurred that gave it primitive kidneys. Two of them. To my knowledge, uh, there's no such thing as an animal that only has one kidney. I think all animals that have kidneys have two. And, um, yeah, one would be enough. But that doesn't mean that having two is a disadvantage. So there's no reason why these genes that cause us to have two kidneys should not stick around and be passed on to future generations. Evolution always works this way. Random mutations happen, some form of selection process is applied to whatever the results are, and if the result passes the selection, it sticks around and it's passed on. And if it doesn't pass the selection, then it dies out. What's kept after the selection is not the result of intentional design, but it certainly appears that way because of the amount of time that this process has had to come up with what's here today. Now creationists have the following objection to all of this, and you've mentioned that. There are no beneficial mutations. All mutations are detrimental, and that's an outright lie. In fact, creationists even acknowledge that beneficial mutations exist because they accept that microevolution occurs, evolution within a species. Basically what, the, what this means is that they accept there are beneficial mutations but that there are limitations to what it can accomplish. They argue that uh, no matter how many adaptations occur in a population of let's say dogs, they will always be dogs and um, yeah that's true but so what? eventually there'll be a new species of dog because they won't be able to breed with other dogs outside that population anymore. They will be too genetically different. Again, the creationists will complain that it doesn't matter if they can breed with other dogs or not, they are still dogs 
and evolution requires the creation of new kinds of animal and well that's absolutely false first of all what is a kind of animal creationists never define that word and the reason they don't define the word is so that no matter what is presented they will always be able to say no that's not a new kind the funny thing though is that evolution definitely doesn't demand the creation of new kinds whatever it means Darwin's book was not called the origin of kinds it was called the origin of species and species is a clearly defined scientific term we have two eyes and that gives us depth perception therefore we were given two eyes for that specific purpose yeah that's what it seems like but the theory of evolution tells us that we have two eyes because that's what evolved it gave us depth perception and that gave us an advantage by the way many animals have two eyes but still can't perceive depth because the they have their eyes on the sides of their heads so they can't look at the same thing with both eyes the idea that we must have been created by an intelligence is a perfectly reasonable assumption to begin with the problem is that it fails as soon as you start looking for evidence to support it evolution doesn't okay now to end this video I'd like to point out that I'm not going to respond to what you said about the Bible I should never respond to that line of questions to begin with and I'm sorry I did our discussion was about evolution and not about Christianity those topics are completely unrelated now, if you'd like to have a discussion about Christianity, I'm open to that. But um, not until after we've left the evolution topic behind us. Please, understand that evolution is not about whether there's a god or not. It's not about whether some god decided to become human 2,000 years ago and got nailed to a cross. Evolution is a scientific theory that explains the diversity of life. That's it. It doesn't address anything else. The idea that you have to be an atheist to accept evolution is a blatant lie. Most people, in fact, who believe in evolution are Christians. They're just not fundamentalists. They don't interpret Genesis literally. Okay, I hope I've answered your questions. Feel free to get back to me if uh, you're not satisfied with these answers, or if you have more questions. Thanks for watching. Bye.